It's Patrick Cooch back again. Today I'm going to talk about MCSI performance and uh, usage of MCSI. First, let's do a little review of what a BMC does. A BMC is also called an MC. I'll use the two terms interchangeably in this uh, presentation. A BMC stands for Baseboard Management Controller and MC is Management Controller. Essentially, it's an embedded device that's usually on your servers and it goes around and it's always monitoring the status of all the various components of your computer. And most of the time the BMC is connected to some kind of an Ethernet controller, um, usually a LOM, LAN on motherboard, and, the, and that LOM provides a, a usually not, a, uh, not through PCIe but through another mechanism called a sideband interface, it provides an Ethernet connectivity for the management controller. And today we're going to be talking about MCSI is one of those um, sideband interfaces. So there's this dedicated connection between the manager controller and the LOM, and, and it uses that for sending and receiving Ethernet traffic. So if you want to go find out the temperature of a, of a CPU or how fast a fan is going or voltage or whatever, this is how it happens usually remotely. You connect to the manager controller uh, over the, the LOM interface. So that's its Ethernet connectivity to the outside world. And the uh, network controller sideband interface, which is called MCSI, is uh, defined by the DMTF at www.dmtf.org, and that is a standards body. And the, the uh, MCSI interface is one of the many specifications that came out of the DMTF, and it's continuing to be updated. Um, I think we just came out with 1.1 recently of the MCSI spec. Anyhow, MCSI is a 100 megabit full duplex Ethernet connection between the network controller, ALOM, and the BMC, or the MC. And it is fast and pretty extensible and is widely adopted. And it's an industry standard, which is key. Since before MCSI, all the different Ethernet vendors had different proprietary mechanisms for sending and receiving traffic to the management controller over a sideband interface. The DMTF came in and said, hey, let's, let's make this a standard, and they did, and, and it's uh, widely used today in the industry. So how it works is the Ethernet traffic comes into the network controller and is sent over this sideband interface, over NCSI, to the management controller to do whatever task it needs to get done, right? go gather a piece of information turn on the server, whatever you want. And likewise, the way that the management controller configures things, right, it has to tell the network controller, hey, I want traffic, and I only want traffic with, that matches this pattern. So the two most common patterns or filters that are configured is the MAC address and the VLAN. So the management controller sends NCSI commands, there's a whole rich library of commands for setting uh, a VLAN and a MAC address. So usually the manager controller has its own dedicated MAC address. That way you can get and receive any traffic at once. You can do things from simple uh, IPMI stuff to you can have your own embedded web browser or an FTP to upload the BIOS or something like that, right? So anyways, it sends these commands, the NCSI commands, over the NCSI link to the network controller and says, hey, uh, this is this is the my parameters. This is the, the kind of data I want. So then when traffic then comes from the outside world into the network controller, the network controller will examine that packet and figure out what to do with it. If it doesn't match one of the filters for the BMC, it sends it up to the host, just like you would expect. Now, another packet will come in and it's examined and it's like, oh, that one matches the MAC and VLAN that the manager controller just configured, so I'm going to send this over to the NCSI interface to the BMC. And these two traffic patterns can be interspersed, and both the, the BMC and the host OS can send and receive Ethernet traffic using the same exact physical uh, network controller. And that's the whole purpose of the sideband interface, is so you can share one physical port or multiple ports with the OS without having to have a dedicated uh, uh, MAC Phi down there for your, your BMC. So let's look at some different kinds of traffic, some different kinds of traffic patterns that a BMC might receive. So the first is, is the, 
the network controllers, you know, some management console is going to be sending a bunch of requests and it's going, and it's going to uh, ask for data. So in this case, the simple little example here, some, some operator on some remote computer issued a whole bunch of IPMI commands to go and query the BMC and say, hey, what's your fan speed, what's your temperature, you know, what, what's your voltages, all that kind of stuff. And the BMC would go and, and respond to each one of those requests and send back a, a response. And then the, the GUI here in this case would display that stuff in the human readable form. So that's one kind of traffic pattern, so request response kind of pattern, right? So the, the management console would send a request like, please give me this data. And then the management controller would get it and it would send it back as a response. It's a request response pattern. The second kind of pattern is where the management controller is the one that's transmitting most of the data. And that's usually the case of some kind of console redirection. In this case, we're doing serial over LAN. And uh, that's a BMC to network kind of uh, direction. That's the, the majority of the traffic is going from the BMC to the um, remote console, to the Ethernet, right, to the network. And the last pattern here is where you have the uh, management console streaming a, a large amount of data uh, from the network to the management controller. And an, an example of that is uh, trying to do an OS install, right, where your, your management console is transmitting a large amount of data and it's not really getting anything back. It's just sending a bunch of data, right? In this case, it's sending a, you know, ISO image or something like that, a uh, remote install of the OS to to the um, to the server. So those are the three kinds of patterns. Now let's take a little closer look at them. So NCSI, as I said before, is a hundred megabit full duplex connection. That means that it's a hundred megabit, so you can transmit hundred megabit receive. It's not a, a you know like SM bus. You can only transmit and receive it at, at any given time. This so way you can you can do both at the same time. So now uh, it's pretty common these days, or it's uncommon I should say, to have a a, a a LOM on your server that's only 100 megabits. So that means that the physical connection to the outside world is usually uh, one gigabit or even 10 gigabits. Or even now we got 40 gigabits and you know 25 gigs is on the way. Um, so that means that the, the, the physical link to the outside world is usually much faster than what NCSI is capable of doing, which is okay since most management controllers, I haven't seen one yet that can even do 100 megabits, let alone 10 gigabits. So um, let me repeat that, 100 megabits versus 10 gigabits, right? So there's no BMC today uh, as of this writing that I've seen that can handle a full 100 megabits of traffic. So what happens is, and you have this disparity of, of speeds, is, is that data will come in pretty quickly. You know, your management console is going to send a packet, and it's going to go from the console to the, the LOM pretty quickly, and then relatively slowly, it's going to go through from the NC, from the network controller to the to the BMC and back. But you know, for a request response, it doesn't really matter because that's a pretty slow um, mechanism, anyways, and. Uh, I know this because I've tested it. So in fact, I have this utility here you can go get. I call it IPMI ping. It's just a simple little UDP uh, packet generator that sends IPMI commands to a BMC, and it just sends a command, and it waits for a response, and then it sends the next command. It's the same command over and over. It's like an IPMI um, ping and pong kind of mechanism. And uh, the, the utility will send the next packet as soon as it gets back response. So that means is that as fast as a Xeon processor will pump it, it will send the next command. So using this command, you can see that uh, on even if you're using a 100 megabit pipe, right, with NCSI, you're only maxing out at about 0 0.06 megabits. That's just the nature of the request response, right? There's lots of dead time, if you will, because the packet has to go, it has to go into the BMC, and be processed and responded to. And so it's just, just the nature of a request response kind of uh, communication protocol. So uh, NCSI uh, performance isn't really an issue here because there is no issue. So 0 0.06 megabits pretty easy to keep up with. For the situation where the BMC is transmitting data like in serial over LAN where it's sending a whole bunch of data packets it's not really, there's no performance issue there as well because 
the console is just receiving it as fast as it's sent, and so there's no issue of the data coming coming to it at 100 megabits. It's not expecting it any faster. Now the other situation is when you're doing this like OS install, right, where you're sending lots and lots of data to the management console, you're streaming all this data from this past pipe, it's like, wow, that's not as fast as I expected it to be. Why is that? So I was getting this question from several uh, customers. And so I did some investigation and I talked to the customers, I did my own investigation, and I found out that on average we're getting less than 8 megabits per second when you're trying to do like an OS install or some other kind of test, in my case synthetic testing using iPerf, I was getting less than 8 megabits on a 100 megabit pipe. I was like, why? Why is that happening? Why is it, I have a 100 megabit connection there, but I'm not getting 100 megabits, I'm getting less than 8. Why, you know, what is the reason for that? I couldn't figure it out. The customers were confused and like, oh, NCSI is broken, it doesn't work. So I began my investigation. So it looks, it looks something like this. So again, here's a, an image of the BMC on the left and the NCSI link between the BMC and the network controller. And then you have your outside, you know, uh, gigabit or 10 gigabit pipe. And so the BMC receives a, a packet, right? And while it's processing that packet, more packets could be coming in off of this wire super fast. And there's not enough space left in the Ethernet controller to... Um, to, to hold it all. So you're going to have buffer overruns. When you have that, then the packets will simply be lost. They're just going to be dropped, right? And uh, that's uh, a bad thing. And the reason this happens is, uh, is in this diagram here, you'll see a typical configuration on an Ether, Intel Ethernet controller that supports NCSI. We have dedicated RX and TX buffers for the NCSI traffic. And when a packet comes in, it's placed into the RX queue uh, buffer queue for uh, the NCSI and then uh, then uh, when it's the, the head of the line there it is transmitted to the network controller or to the BMC sorry now what happens if the BMC is busy doing something processing one and a whole bunch of other packets come in is the buffer quickly can fill up on Intel Ethernet controllers we have 8k of buffer space on our receive queue and uh, this can be read. The BMC can read this using the NCSI get capabilities command and go determine this. And this is the same. I've, I've done some testing on uh, other vendors, non-Intel Ethernet controllers, and they, all the other ones I've tested have eight, also 8K. So it seems to be a pretty standard size. So what happens is, is if, the, if the BMC is currently processing a command and, there's, and, it, and it can't receive any more, um, you know, any more data, uh, and five of these packets come in at 1.5k a piece. 1.5k is a is an Ethernet frame, standard Ethernet frame, max size, uh, which which would be exactly what happened if you're doing an OS install and you're streaming, you know, hundreds of megabytes or gigs of data. And you're streaming that data. You're going to send a whole bunch of packets of 1.5k, and and after five of them, right, uh, it's gonna the buffer is going to be full. You're already using 7.5k of your 8k buffer. You're not going to be able to fit another one. So the next packet is just going to get dropped. Right? It's going to go in the bit bucket, and that will cause all kinds of performance issues with TCP timeouts and retries. And uh, <clears throat> and you'll see what we see here in this slide here. I did a test of streaming. On the left is a Windows client, and on the right is uh, is the BMC and uh, running Linux, and it it'll It'll stream the data, and uh, it's not a slow like this. It is blasting the data really fast. And what you'll see is, is here in the chart, you'll see the performance starts off fast and then goes down because then we go all these retries, retries, and then it kind of peaks up a little bit as the buffers drain and we get uh, more packets in there, and then it's all flow and we get all these retries. So it's really up and down performance. It's not, it's not even. And uh, so this is actual testing. I did all this testing. And then I decided, oh, let's try it on Linux. This happens when we're streaming from Linux. And I did the same test under Linux. And lo and behold, do we still get this jagged, non-linear you know, linear kind of performance? But it's a whole lot better than it was when we're transmitting you know, in the iPerf. We're transmitting from the, the client machine, which was Windows, and now Linux to a BMC. The performance was much less. Are much greater, greater in Linux, and I couldn't figure out why. 
And so I, you know, I'm looking at this and I'm like, wow, what is going on? Why is this different? This isn't what I was intending to, to investigate. I wasn't trying to figure out why things are different under Windows and Linux and why the performance is so much different. But it led me down the path for a solution for the BMCs. And the reason I did that, the reason I found that was because what I first started doing was just analyzing traffic using Wireshark uh, or for packets going back and forth. And what I discovered was there's this thing called the window size. This is the TCP window size. And basically how it works is, is when uh, one side sends a packet, part of the packet is its window size. It says, hey, in this case, I have 65K free of buffer space. So you can send me 65K of data before I run out of uh, buffer space. So go ahead and blast me 65K if you want to. And when he sends back a, a response, he's going to send the same thing. Oh, I have so much data available. And as your buffer, you know, if I send all that data across to the right side and he sends back an ACK, he's going to then say, hey, now I have 24K because you just sent me, you know, a whole bunch of memory, so I have less. And so the right side, or the left side can then gauge how much buffers, you know, how much data can send for it needs to basically uh, pause itself. So the TCPA window size is something that's advertised back and forth uh, over a connection as part of the standard uh, Ethernet frames here or TCP frames. So under most cases, most modern BMCs are now running an embedded Linux, okay? And there, there used to be, you know, you hand roll your own OS and those BMCs when I started in the industry here. But now, you know, Linux has come so far that most companies are using a nice uh, embedded Linux that has all kinds of cool features in it, right? So in this case, my Windows client is going to say, when I first open up a session, first packet it sends is like, hey, I'm going to talk to you. By the way, my TCP IP buffer size is 64K. And my testing show that uh, when the Linux uh, sent back a packet, you know, some other response to something else, the TCP IP window that it, it advertised was 85K. So these are the advertised sizes on back and forth. My Windows uh, laptop said, hey, I can, I can take 64K of data at a time. And the, the BMC said, hey, I can handle 85K of data at a time. That means you can send me 85K of data before my buffers overflow in my BMC. I have enough space to be able to handle that in my state. OK, cool. Well, we forgot, or maybe the BMC guys forgot, or most people forget, that there's this other component there in the middle, this network controller, and it only handles 8K. So in reality, that the BMC, when it advertises 85K, isn't accurate at all, right? He says, send me up to 85K, but he can really handle 8. The piece in between is the bottleneck, right? So this data comes in, and any more packets that come in are dropped, right? Because he doesn't have, he only has 8K. The, the client on the right is saying, hey, I can blast 85K of data, but in reality, it's about eight, right? Because it's just gonna get dropped because the more, if he sends anything over eight, that before it gets processed, it's just gonna get dropped. And that's why you have this, this performance, uh, uneven, this sawtooth performance uh, diagram that you saw before. Remember? So, and this is exactly why. Because it's uh, the TCP window size is incorrect. So, how do we fix this? Well, what can we change? Well, we can't change the software. We can't change the management stack on my laptop, right? I can't go change the, the network stack on there. We can't change the network controller because that's hardware, right? I can't go in and fiddle with that very easily. So, what can we change? Well, we can go change the, the BMC. Right? The BMC is the one that's advertising as 85K, and he doesn't, right? He may, the little OS in there may have 85K of space, but he needs to take into account what the network controller buffer space is, not what necessarily what the OS in the BMC can handle. So uh, I did some research, and uh, there's, um, there's different settings for TCPA window sizes. There's the transmit, there's the receive side, it's like how much can I receive? And the other one is how much of the network stack can the BMC can transmit uh, out to the uh, to the queues within the OS, right? And then that translates to off to uh, that eventually gets sent off to the CSI interface. But from a Linux perspective, 
these are the two things that are of importance to a Linux stack. And they have initial size and then they have maximum sizes. So as the, the needs may change during the run of a program, the, uh, the Linux stack can say, hey, I have more, you can send me more and more data. I can, I can handle more and more. The data rate is slower. You know, some algorithm that the, that the OS is used to potentially change that. So it's not fixed. It's sliding. It can move. And the same thing happens under Windows. It's just a different algorithm. So in Linux, in a modern Linux OS, in the Proxys Net IPv4 directory, there's these two files. There's TCP receive memory and TCP write memory or probably read memory. And uh, those are the files where all these settings are set. So these are the ones that default in the BMC that I got a hold of and was able to go off and dig around in. Um, and uh, the initial size was set at this huge number for the receive. Of course, that doesn't even match with the BMC that the network controller has. And then this is the minimum, and then this is the maximum. So basically you're saying, hey, I have 85K of space that you can send me data, right? You can blast that 85K, which, which again, that the, the BMC can handle, but the, the NCSI interface isn't designed to be able to handle that, especially at the, at the speeds that, you know, with the disparity of speeds between NCSI 100 megabit and the external link of, you know, a gig or 10 gig. So I did lots of tinkering around and just experimenting I'm not a Linux guy at all, but I did some experimenting and I found out that these settings here seem to work pretty well, right? If I set the basically initial size of 12K for my receive buffer uh, using these kind of commands here, these syscontrol commands on, in the VMC, then the performance was significantly better. In fact, uh, back on a, when I'm using a Windows client, right, which was the worst case scenario, before I had less than eight megabits of data throughput, with these settings on the same exact BMC, I was able to get up to uh, almost 65 megabits. That's an 800% performance. And the only reason it was stopped at 65 megabits is because that's at the maximum of the BMC. You gotta remember, BMC is a pretty small embedded little device. It's not made for handling you know 100 megabits of data. It's meant to go off over slow SM bus and other buses and go talk and to these various sensors and find out what's going on. So in this case, uh, these settings here, which I just, you know, just through trial and error, went and figured out, basically I'm saying, hey, I can receive 12K. That 12K means, what that is, is that that's kind of a, a number that says, even though it's only 8K in the receive buffers of the hardware, uh, if you take into account how fast the BMC can actually process that data, it actually is streaming at about 12k at a time, okay? So uh, that's what I that's that was what I came up with is these numbers, and you should be able to programmatically figure it out better. Uh, so I didn't forget about this. Why was there a disparity between streaming from Windows and Linux? Right? Probably thought I was going to forget about that. I didn't forget. And uh, what I concluded was is that Linux and Windows had different uh, algorithms for doing congestion management. So if I'm running a Linux client to a Linux OS, which is what I was doing, they will use the same algorithm and they find a happy medium. Uh, it's still not as good as if you if you go hand if you go tweak those settings like I just showed you, but it's still pretty good, right? You're at, at uh, 70 megabits, you know, peaking at 74, 75 megabits, briefly. Um, at the uh, when Linux to Linux now Windows Windows uses a completely different algorithm for that TCP uh, congestion and so it could never they could never align so the performance was always poor so that's my deduction uh, I don't know for sure that's correct but that was what my testing and, and my theory came out to be so in summary the NCSI interface was defined by the DMTF and it provides a 100 megabit uh, full duplex sideband interface between uh, the outside world and ALOM and your management controller. And it's widely used in the, in the industry today. If you want to make full use of that interface, right, if you're not just doing uh, request response traffic, which up till 
recently has been the majority of the traffic. If you want to make better use of that and you want to get the best performance possible, then your management controller needs to go and take into account the buffer sizes on the Ethernet controller. And again, it can use that. You can use a DMTF defined in CSI commands uh, to go find out how much buffer space is on that device so it can make intelligent decisions on its own internal usage and, and what it's, then its network stack can use when it's doing that TCP window. Right? If you have the wrong TCP window size, your performance is going to be horrible. If you have the right TCP window size, it'll help optimize your performance. So some extra resources, you can always go to the DMTF uh, website and read about NCSI. Uh, you want to know about the internals of uh, Intel uh, Ethernet controllers, you can go to the intel.com site and go dig around to the e Ethernet products and find a specific product and open up the data sheet. And then the e Intel uh, Ethernet blog site where I blog um, stuff and there's always questions of being answered and that kind of stuff. So I hope you found this of use. Um, I try to make it as accurate as possible. Some of the stuff I have in here are my conclusions. Like I don't know for exactly how Windows and Linux does their congestion management algorithms, but from my experience and, and reading, it, it does appear they do differently and, and that seems to hold up. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this and you found it of use. And thank you very much.